Thank you. I came to the Family Equality Council as a volunteer many years ago. Today, I serve on the board of directors with volunteers from all over the country. Over the years, working with Family Equality Council, I have met so many inspiring people and heard their compelling and deeply personal stories. Stories that are eerily similar to mine. My wife and I tried to build a family for nine years, and we tried everything. I mean everything. I won't get into details. During that time, <laughs> we faced many difficult and heartbreaking barriers. Adoption agencies that wouldn't collude with us. That's what they said. We had to be really creative on our adoption applications. We accepted two referrals, those are babies in adoption speak, and after months of waiting, they just disappeared right out of the system. We faced things that felt terrible while we were trying to create something that so many other couples take for granted, a family. And then we met a mom who very deliberately wanted to choose same gender parents for her child. But even that beautiful experience was tainted by a hospital that was anti-adoption, especially gay adoption, and a state that wouldn't allow us to put both of our names on the birth certificate. And that culminated in a harrowing and scary moment where we were literally chased out of a Texas hospital with our two-day-old son tucked into a rented car seat, terrified we were gonna lose him and heading to the relative safety of an Applebee's <laughs> to sign our preliminary adoption papers. Imagine that. A smoke-filled Applebee's was safer for our family than a hospital. But now, years later, we're a happy family of three. And when I talk about our adoption story and the time that it took us, I know that it happened for a reason and that my family was waiting for that boy, that boy you saw a minute ago. We were waiting for him. But it didn't have to be that way, and it doesn't have to be that way. That's only my story. And you'd think that nearly 10 years later and after our big marriage win, it wouldn't be this way anymore. And yet, there are so many other stories that are equally or even more harrowing. It's true. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of marriage equality. And at that time, many people, all of us here at the Family Equality Council, our straight allies, our volunteers, our families, and communities across the country breathed a collective sigh of relief. We felt like maybe some of the many barriers that we dealt with would be removed. But even with that relief and hope, everyone at Family Equality went back to work the very next morning. All of the people doing all of the hard work to keep our organization moving forward and fighting the good fight went back to work because the fight was not over, and it's still not over, not for our families and not by a long shot. Equality legislation doesn't mean that our families are experiencing and living equality. In fact, our families are under attack from legislation called Religious Freedom Restoration Acts, or RIFRAs. Even before the Supreme Court ruled on marriage, Michigan's governor signed an adoption-specific RIFRA allowing agencies to refuse to work with people with whom they have a moral or religious objection. We all know what that means. These RIFRAs are discrimination disguised as religious liberty. Now, in Michigan, agencies have a license to discriminate against us. And it's happening all over. Virginia and North Dakota already have similar laws in place. Every day, Family Equality Council is fighting those people and those laws that deny our basic rights. Yeah. These battles will get worse before they get better. 
This legislative season, Family Equality Council is tracking an incredible 27 bills in 17 states that can be characterized as RIFRAs, including six bills in the South. And as far as our work is concerned, that is one of the most crucial areas of the country. The South is home to one third of our families, and yet that region also has the fewest legal protections for LGBTQ people. That's why the Family Equality Council has redoubled our work in that area. And you get no better example of our work than our legal clinics. With these clinics, we meet our most vulnerable families in their own communities and we equip them with the tools they need to protect themselves. We give those families much needed legal advice on everything from adoption to foster care to preparation of wills and estate planning. We do what we have to do to keep these families safe. In addition, in addition to working directly with families, we have trained nearly 50 lawyers in how to handle issues related to LGBTQ-headed families. Finding and supporting hard-to-reach families like those in the South is a very important theme in our work. Now, I want to talk about perhaps the most important work we've done this year for our same-sex parents and their children. For the first time, family equality is a plaintiff in a federal lawsuit against the last state with a law banning same-sex couples from adopting. The state with the highest rate of same-sex couples raising children in the entire country, Mississippi. I am serious. <laughs> the case was filed on behalf of four same-sex couples, including one with a 15-year-old son and one with an 8-year-old daughter. These couples, despite raising their children since birth, are not legal parents in the eyes of Mississippi law. This case was argued in front of a judge in November by Roberta Kaplan, the attorney who famously won the Windsor case at the Supreme Court. Yeah. This is a perfect example of the work of Family Equality Council, standing up for our country's three million same-sex parents and their six million children. We are changing attitudes and policies to ensure all families are respected and protected. We're changing them to ensure the real, lived safety of families across the entire country, not just those with access to resources. Right now, right now, we'd like you to hear from one of those families. Almost every ban in the country on same-sex couples adopting children is now out of the picture. But there is one left. And this morning, four Mississippi gay couples challenged their state's ban in federal court. And they've picked an icon of the civil rights movement to represent them, attorney Roberta Kaplan. It's legally totally impermissible today for a law like that to exist on the books and to treat married gay couples differently than married straight couples and their children. Family Equality Council is a plaintiff alongside the four Mississippi couples because we care not just about same-sex couples in Mississippi being able to adopt, but we also care about all of the children in foster care waiting to find forever homes. The Mississippi law eliminates an entire pool of potential prospective permanent families for these kids. Nobody is being served well by the ban in Mississippi. This law serves no purpose other than to hurt already vulnerable children. For 16 years, you know, almost 16 years, um, I didn't think there was ever going to be a way that we could challenge the state of Mississippi. And so we can't thank Family Equality Council enough for bringing this suit and helping us get to court. Um, it means everything. One night last August, my mom Kathy caught, called me out of my room to um, come talk to her. And I was going through my mind trying to figure out what they knew that could get me grounded. But I wasn't going to get grounded. My mom, Susan, my other mom, Susan, chimed in and asked me if, I would like her to legally adopt me, and I said, hell yeah. The fact that I had to go to court to ask the state to recognize me as this boy's mother, um, 
that I want to tell you is um, it's like a knife in my heart. We're currently waiting for a decision in this case, and we feel really confident it's going to go our way. But as you heard in the video, no family is made stronger, and no child is protected by laws like this. This is why family equality is here. It's why our work was so critical before marriage equality, and it's why our work continues to be critical after it as well. Our community of families needs us. Taking on a lawsuit like this isn't easy, and it isn't free. We're incredibly lucky to have Roberta Kaplan as a partner in this, but we are also lucky to have other partners like you. We consider each and every one of you who are here tonight to be our most important partners. The Family Equality Council is made up of a relatively small staff, and there's so much work to do. Your support leads to our ability to change hearts and minds. And that is what changes the laws of this land.